Hi parents, today I'm gonna to talk to you about taking a road trip, a long road trip with small children. So we just got home from a 14 hour road trip with a just turned three year old and an 18 month old. And they are very different in how they do on the road and what they enjoy um, at this age. So I wanted to give you some tips. The first one is to plan your timing and plan your stops a little bit. It doesn't have to be exact, but plan kind of what you're gonna do throughout the day, similar to how we did our schedule, our daily schedule, which is another video I have you can check out, where we think of blocks of time. So we started barely in the early in the morning, which is something we like to do because then the kids sleep for the first three hours of the trip. So we start about 3 a.m., sometimes 4, depending on how long we have to drive that day. We started at 3 a.m. on this trip, and the kids slept until about 7. So our first stop was when they were waking up about 7.30. Um, our kids fall back asleep when we put them in the car at three and start driving. So that really gave us a big chunk of the hours already out of the way with them sleeping, no potty breaks, just get on the road and drive. Um, and then our first stop for gas and for breakfast and for potty is about 7.30 or eight, depending on when they, they wake up. The car keeps them sleeping longer. So I recommend starting early, but that's up to you. Then think of the day in chunks of time. So we have breakfast, you know, between seven and eight, we're gonna stop, that's probably half an hour to an hour because it always takes longer with kids. Then what am I gonna do from, let's say eight until lunch, 11 or 11:30. okay um, I recommend thinking of those in chunks of time so we usually start with them doing something independent so from 8 to 9 the goal is to give them something independent to do uh, my daughter can play with her leapfrog book that she likes to do independently my son does not do as much independent um, but he's pretty happy if we give him some small toys that he can play with um, and interact with you know and he will sit for a little while by himself the other thing you need to consider is if you can have one person near them and interacting with them. This will allow you to drive longer because you can kind of interact and play with them, read them a book, things like that. So I would sit in the back when he started to get fussy and I would play with the trucks with him and do, you know, vroom, vroom, and do patty cake and do little things with him um, for probably, you know, 30 minutes, an hour. I recommend having stuff that you can interact with whatever they are, age are, having toys they can do independent with you, and then having something that you can do with them. Books, I'd say bring some books that are little golden books that have more story and you can drag out the story. You can make it as long or as short as you want by how slow you say it and how slow you turn the pictures. Um, so this book, whereas at home we may read in five to 10 minutes on the road, it can be a 20 minute activity because I can read it very slowly to her um, if my husband's driving and I'm sitting in the back with them. The other thing is, like I said, independent activities, so she'll do her leapfrog. If you have tablets your kids play on, um, my kids, one of my kids will watch TV all day if we let her. The other one, who's 18 months, he's not that interested. It will appease him for 20 or 30 minutes, but at home, that's when he just goes off and plays and does stuff on his own. So in the car, I know that I'm not going to get, we can't use the TV to to, you know, to have them occupied all day in the car. So we need to plan those TV times, okay? So what we do is, like I said, the first hour after breakfast, try and get them to play independently. If he needs some help, I try and help with him. Um, interacting, things to interact with them, books, things you can interact with them, things they can do on their own. Um, we have, I have a um, dry erase board that my daughter likes to play with, dry erase crayons, which I just recently found out exists, which are pretty cool. Um, and so just a couple activities like that. For my son, we brought a Melissa and Doug wooden board book. I put it in a big Ziploc bag, um, and it's one that makes noise when you put the animals in the right place. Um, so I can sit by him and do that with him for a little bit. He can do it, some of it on his own, if you don't mind the puzzle pieces ending up on the floor. So I have them do some playtime, and then in about an hour, hour and a half, as long as they can get, then we say, okay, now it's time to watch a movie. Now it's time to watch Baby Einstein or Little Baby Bum, whatever you have brought with you for them to watch, um, which I do recommend. We watch a lot more TV on the road than we watch at home. So remember, I think of it in chunks of time. So after breakfast, we have a chunk of indep independent time slash I can play with them if they're upset. If you're not the only driver. If there's another driver, someone can sit back there. Then we have a chunk of TV time, and we have a snack. We we'll turn the TV off, have a snack, because that's an activity all in itself, another chunk of time. Um, then we stop for lunch. This is when we have our big break, usually. We stop 
we get lunch and we find a place where the kids can run around. Um, none of the fast food places have play areas open right now because of COVID. So what we would do is we'd pick up uh, the fast food and we would go to, we found a city park, we found a rest area that had a play area. Um, even if it's just a picnic table and grass, somewhere they can get out and they can run around. So we have lunch at a picnic table, breakfast we usually eat in the car. I just kind of help them, you know, have something easy, an applesauce pouch or something easy they can eat. I do recommend bringing along with their cups that they fill up with juice or milk or whatever you have um, that are more spill proof for the car. I recommend bringing some kind of little container um, that you can put a snack in and they can sit in between their legs and sit with it in their car seat. So remember to pack these. Um, that's easy too if you end up having to eat on the road because you're in a hurry or because there's nowhere you can find a place to eat outside. It's raining. So lunch is another chunk of time. This is when I recommend letting them run around, even if it's just sitting at a picnic table, walking around looking at trees, something to be outside of the car and not in their car seats. Then when we get back in the car, we have another chunk of time. Um, my smaller guy, the 18 month old, he went to sleep right away. Um, my daughter, I think, looked at books for maybe 20 or 30 minutes, just kind of played with her stuffed animal, and then they both slept. We go all out with sleeping in the car. We say, it's nap time, here's your blankie, here's your stuffed animal, whatever they need to be comfortable. So the next chunk of time is nap time. We also put a sound app on an iPad or on our phone and put it between them in the back seat so that when we are talking or if we're listening to the radio, they have a little bit of a buffer. So I recommend that. That's easy enough to get an app on your phone, free app for a sound machine, white noise, put that between them. Um, and that helps buffer it a little bit when they're sleeping in the morning if you leave early and also if they're sleeping at nap. So the next chunk of time was nap time. My kids wake up kind of subtly from nap when we're driving and just kind of, you hear them stirring around a little bit. When they're fully woken up from nap, we start another chunk of time. We have snack time again. Um, and then we have another, okay, now we're going to play independently or now we're gonna watch a movie, depending on how long you have to go. The idea is to have somewhat of a plan of the chunks of time so that you don't start off at eight in the morning watching a movie and your kids are bored and stir crazy by 9.30 and you don't have anything else to do with them. They're like, well, I really wish they would watch TV all day and be happy. That doesn't work for kids, especially for little kids. They get grouchy, they get they get miserable, okay? And then you're gonna be miserable. So try and think of it, break it up into things that they can do, all right? So, and then we get to, again, after we do nap, we do snack, we do a tablet or movie or a toy or a book, and then we do dinner time, okay? It's depending on how long you're gonna be on the road. At this point, because we left at 3 a.m., we arrived at five. And so we were almost there, we got there at five, checked in the hotel, got some dinner, um, things move very quickly, and then it's time to go to sleep for bedtime in the hotel. So those are my tips is to break it into chunks. Be sure to be prepared for things like snacks. Of course, you'd want you know, napkins and hand sanitizer, things to clean up a mess, extra plastic bags um, for trash. Uh, I would bring a bib, if you have a little guy, put him on him when you're at the picnic table or put it on put him on him in the car, even for snack. It's less food. We have the bibs, the silicone bibs with a pocket on the bottom. So the food is getting caught there instead of being all over your car. It's a little helpful. There's not as much on his shirt. Um, just the normal things you use at home. Try and plan it as close to what you have at home um, is what you're gonna do in the car with them. And that will help them to have an easier time in the car. So those are my recommendations as to plan it out. Um, it doesn't have to be a super strict schedule. Sometimes the stops are a little earlier or later than you expected and you have to roll with it. But I do recommend doing as much as you can to make it similar to what you have at home. We brought my daughter, my daughter has been potty trained for almost a year, but we bought the little potty chair because that would be easier. And sometimes at rest areas, there's grass at a picnic table and she just sat on the little potty chair and we dumped it in the grass because it was easier than always having to take her inside. Um, you know, and she doesn't like the, the air, the air dryers her hand are really loud and you know, everything's new. And then we're also sanitizing extra because of COVID and putting on masks. And so it was easier just to say, here's your little potty that you're used to. Um, so whatever you can bring that's gonna be similar to what they have at home is great. Last, I recommend, um, these are excellent 
storage um, things that strap onto the back of the seat. So my kids are rear facing, so we have this strapped onto the front seats. Uh, but I can put their snack. I put their snack things here. I put their juice cups when they weren't actively drinking them. I put books in here. Um, we put my my son's little toys were all up here. Their blankets when it wasn't nap time, anything like that. So these I think are about five bucks on Amazon. Highly recommend it because everything you can see um, and you can grab it easily. I can even reach behind me sometimes and get something out um, and and hand it to them over you know from the front seat. So I recommend those for organizing. And I hope you have an awesome family trip or road trip. I hope it goes well for you and your kids have a great time and you have a great time. And I hope you've enjoyed these easy peasy tips for your road trip with little kids. If you are the only driver on your road trip and you have your kids with you, it just means that you're going to have to make more stops or stop more frequently. So instead of planning from when they wake up, stopping at 7.30 for breakfast and not stopping until lunch, you'll probably have to stop again in the middle of that time to get them out, to give them a snack, to interact with them a little bit. So plan on your road trip taking a little bit longer with one driver because you will have to stop. Instead of going three to four hours without stopping, um, you'll probably have to stop in an hour and a half to two hours. Uh, Bye, have an easy peasy day. Have a great road trip with your kids.